thank you so much for staying with us here on Morning Live. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic has affected many sectors of the economy and the tourism sector is no different. And this morning, we would like to shine the spotlight on tourism and ecotourism in particular and how the lockdown has, of course, affected the sector financially. For more on this, uh, let's speak to Spelele uh, Lutuli, also known as Miss Tourist. And she's, of course, uh, the CEO of, of and founder of Beyond Borders, which is a creative advertising, marketing, PR and brand management company that helps build brands through creative content, creating as well as helping with the overall brand and marketing strategy. Thanks so much for speaking to us. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you so much, Sakina, for having me and good morning to all the Morning Live uh, viewers. So we know that the tourism sector has really been one of the sectors that has borne the brunt of this pandemic. But just how bad has it been? Uh, Sakina, it really has been bad because from the time when the lockdown started, financially there has been no income. And the worst thing that happened was some of the establishments closing down permanently which of course affected the entire value chain from your agricultural sector to the beverage industry that is to supply those establishments. But again, as we speak, we are witnessing its ripple effects when it comes to uh, the bloodbath that we've seen when it comes to job losses, because we have a lot of uh, people that are now permanently unemployed, but also bearing in mind that our economy was in a very critical but stable state when the uh, pandemic hit us. So it really has made matters worse. But we are hoping uh, now that we are on level two, things are going to start coming up slowly. And of course, uh, you are dressed for the part this morning. It is Heritage Month here in South Africa. You look absolutely fabulous, by the way. Uh, but so coming to domestic tourism, how has COVID-19 actually changed the face of domestic tourism? Um, obviously, the new normal will be us adhering to the right protocols in terms of uh, social distancing, which sometimes may, may be difficult based on the fact that when we travel, we want to do certain activities that may actually not allow that. So for now, some activities are limited, but we also have to wear these masks, which, um, you know, we, we, we can't showcase our lipsticks and beautiful smiles. <laughs> and we have to use sanitizers, we have to wash our hands. It, it's really, really something. And obviously, one always panics, thinking that, what if I contract it? So it's really changed uh, the face of tourism. But I am um, very positive that the establishments are ready and uh, adhering to, to, to those protocols, and we will definitely um, win this fight. Uh, you know, you talk about being ready and, and, and the industry being ready, but one of the things, and I remember thinking a couple of years back, it's cheaper for me to go and have a five-star getaway to Mauritius than it would be for me to go and have that very same experience in Cape Town, for example, uh, Spelele. So how has COVID-19 changed the game, uh, especially with regard to pricing and especially what that means for the South African traveler right now? Many of us feeling really boxed in and suffering from cabin fever. Um, I will say the good side of this bad pandemic is that it has opened up tourism, especially the luxury establishments that were purely reserved for the dollar market. And as you know, we cannot compete with the dollar. Um, I used to see people renting on Twitter, which understandably so, I knew where they were coming from. Because as we travel, we seek for value, alternatives. Because if I, for instance, find that Turkey is cheaper as compared to me going to a certain five-star resort in Bumalang. I'll opt to go to Turkey because I'm still going to shop. I'm going to still going to see uh, the scenery rather than spending money locally. So now what I see is that um, somebody who usually travels annually, they never stop traveling. Once the bug has hit you, it hits you. So what they will do, they will scale down, but also look into the local establishments that previously went unaffordable. And I'm happy to say that I've been bombarded with a lot of messages, people wanting to book, people craving to go out. And the establishments are coming to the party. For instance, one has 
brought down their prices from 27,000 rands per person per night sharing to 5,900 rands. And I say, wow, it's actually an offer that we've never really seen because they do understand that with the borders being closed, their market also has also shrunk, you know. So mm. you cannot have operational costs that are not going down while you're sitting in an empty resort that's not being bringing you any income. So I think it's a good thing that South Africans will now be able to explore those hidden gems and to travel locally and, of course, to boost the economy because that's what it's about. I mean, the travel industry is worth hundreds of billions, you know, globally. So I am so, uh, you know, relieved that the gap that we've seen in terms of us being on the lockdown may be closed by when people now start traveling, especially now on, on level two. And it's definitely witnessed by the conversions that I've seen on Twitter, people making bookings, wanting to go. So it's quite positive, Sakina. Now, I picked up on a trend um, on uh, Twitter where you were trending internationally uh, <coughs> uh, over something that you had uh, noted about ecotourism in particular. And, you know, in as much as we, of course, had to focus on ourselves primarily trying to get through this pandemic and how it's affected human life, uh, we seem to have perhaps forgotten in some instances that animals were very much part and parcel of the tourism ecosystem um, also needed to be looked after. And what has happened in that regard? Um, I would say I am, I am so happy that the South African government took a stand when it comes to a rhino poaching and um, ivory poaching, um, which have seen people that have been uh, poaching, uh, is, I mean, see, which have seen people getting heavy sentences for poaching. Coming from a biodiversity, biodiversity conservation background, I realized um, that we were really going to have a situation of going towards extension in terms of the rhino, because they were targeting the white rhino and the syndicate is so smart They've got their um, underground, I mean, their people on the ground that they work with. And sadly so, it's really been uh, that year on year, we were losing a lot of animals. But again, you should remember that, um, as, as you say, ecotourism is part of us. We coexist with nature. South Africa is South Africa because of safari, which they call it abroad. And here in South Africa, we call it the big five. So imagine if in 10 years' time, we say we only have, the big four instead of the big five. So to me, it's 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 really a positive that our government really took a stand in terms of um, mitigating poaching and trying to put some security measures in place to ensure that our animals are protected. And abroad, because there was a story out of Thailand, and 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 they particularly picked up on your post because. Uh, in certain instances, animals have had to be given away, Sipelele, because uh, the sanctuaries, uh, the establishments that house them simply couldn't take care of them. Uh, luckily, with um, the national parks that we have, like sun parks, and of course in case I don't have got as well case I don't my life, they do have a program where they will work with those private game reserves where there's, there's, there's some threats because their security is tight and also there's vast, uh, there's vast areas for them to be, um, to be just grazing. So if we bring it all back, uh, because everybody on level two is wondering, okay, what exactly is it that they can look forward to out there? Um, what is there? Anything in particular that... Uh, the sector is right now offering that South Africans could really benefit from? Yes, I would actually encourage South Africans to really start traveling our own, um, rather discovering our own hidden gems. Reason being, we always focus on those, um, you know, popular cities that people always expect what to, what to see there. I mean, if you look at the Zulu Kingdom, we've got the 600 kilometers of coastline, starting from the south to the north, which is the transfrontier to Mozambique. Along that coastal area, there's quite a vast um, activities. I mean, we've got the turtle tolls happening only in South Africa, between St. Lucia 
and Kozi Bay. I mean, the season starts now in November up until March. Surprisingly, you only find international tourists coming to enjoy what South Africans don't know about. We've got the longest zip line in Africa, which to me is a wow. I mean, people are now into adventure, which is in the South Coast. And over and above that, we have a lot of rural gems that have not yet been explored. I mean, I was blown away when I first um, made... Um, uh, 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 when I first visited other provinces like Limpopo. I mean, to me, Limpopo was unassuming. I never knew much about it until I went there. And for me to, dis to have discovered what they had as a province, I was, it was really mind-blowing because the perception that I had was it's only a religious tourism province. And yes, they had so much in terms of the establishments that are black owned, which is really, really right, because we really also want to see this um, industry transform. So it's encouraging to see people having um, their own resorts, like Kone Village, for instance, I will name it because to me, it was like a Mauritius in the middle of nowhere. And when I went there, it changed my entire perception about traveling. But over and above that, I mean, Sotwana Bay is the is the um, best diving destination in the world. It's number three in the world and number one in Africa. I mean, do people know that? They now have to actually come and see for themselves. But also, it also helps with the local vendors. I mean, for instance, when we do our annual trips to vendor, we make sure that we pass Chakuma Market and support the locals because those mamas that are selling there, they are actually helping their families. So for me, it's that we spread our spend and focus in rural areas and support township tourism and support those areas that we previously uh, disadvantaged. So I would really, really encourage South Africans to go out there and explore the beautiful um, country that we have. I always say South Africa is the world in one because we've got the best that the world doesn't have, including safari, of course, and the beautiful weather and no natural disasters, which is what I like. And, and, and just a final thought, because you obviously have your finger on the pulse here. Have people actually gone out since Level 2 was announced and uh, tourism and uh, obviously travel was allowed? Uh, so have people actually gone out? Are we seeing more people getting out for leisure purposes? People have been craving to go out, to go out Sakina, because we were really, really more like jailed in our own homes. Um, we have been bombarded by inquiries. I mean, I've got people coming to the North Coast, which is quite refreshing, that they are trying, they're now exploring the other side that they never explored before. With also the, 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 the content that I usually post on what is it that is there, people are really, really keen to travel. I mean, the only thing that was discouraging is the price, but now with the affordability, they are traveling. But also, it has made, the COVID-19 has made other activities that were not popular, very popular, like uh, hiking. I think you've seen on tweet how they coin some, you know, terms based on that, because a lot of people are now starting to, to enjoy these outdoor adventures that previously they took for granted. So it's quite exciting to see the uptake because I, I somehow thought they were going to be very apprehensive thinking, what if, but really, really they are happy to travel. But again, with the self-catering lodges, there's minimal contact with other people. So it's still safer because you remain with the people that you've been tra you, you've traveled with and you have your own um, chalet or, or, and you do your own activities. So I'm really, really um, um, uh, encouraged that there's quite a lot of people that are now more keen to travel than we had seen before and appreciating, of course, the beauty of South Africa. Sipelele, thanks so much for speaking to us. Uh, just, uh, you know, bringing perspective into what's happening in the tourism industry at the moment. Sipelele Lutuli, also known as Miss Tourist, a CEO and founder of Beyond Borders, speaking to us about how COVID-19 has affected the tourism sector, uh, which now seems to be trying to find its feet and uh, more people getting out there, not unexpectedly, because... Boy, it was a long time that we were cooped up. Uh, let us know about your experiences as well, if you wish, at Morning Live SABC. Right.